really, really f***ing terrified. I'm so scared. So, I wanted to go to the park to film, record this podcast, uh, but I promised myself that I would never go to the park at night time again because there's jumping f***ing spiders that every time you walk close to them, they jump over your feet or just away from you and they're jumping everywhere and there's so many of them and there's insects that resemble cockroaches but aren't cockroaches and are just disgusting and like I know I know insects are important for the ecosystem and I know that if we didn't have insects in the world that we would, we've, we'd be swimming in flies and different bugs and there are some insects I like you know but most of them are just Ugh, just disgusting and I just don't want to be near them I want them to be out in the countryside away from me so trying to sit down there in the park on one of the little benches or gazebos nah, wasn't gonna happen so I decided then to go somewhere else and when I got there my camera that's really old probably like 10 years old <laughs> Um, it has this problem, and I think it's just because it's old, it will just not last long and it's nothing to do with the battery because I put a separate battery into it. It's nothing to do with it, so it's, it's just old, so that's how it is. So I've come back to the boudoir where the magic happens, my bedroom, and we are going to talk on this podcast, K-Beauty Crew podcast, about why K-Beauty is so popular. I think it's a really interesting topic and um, for statistical reasons and also just my personal conspiracy theories, not conspiracy theory but I just like saying conspiracy in front of theory, uh, theories of why I personally think that K-beauty is popular all over the world now. So. Uh, according to Statista.com, a survey on people uh, outside of South Korea in 2021, it showed that K-beauty products are most popular in Indonesia and the United Arab Emirates. It also showed that uh, there is a surge in demand of exports, K-beauty exports, out of coming from out of South Korea. So every year we see an increase in K-beauty, skincare, makeup, other products being exported. I should have defined what K-beauty is first. So K-beauty is Korean beauty, South Korean beauty, and it's defined as skincare, makeup, hair care, um, beauty tools, and then it can also stretch into cosmetic surgery and it's a huge blanket term, cosmetic surgery, because South Korea is famous for cosmetic surgery too. Um, a fifth of the people surveyed said that the positive effects and the good quality of K-beauty is what keeps them buying more, which is obvious. S some of the reasons why K-beauty is so popular are just really obvious reasons. The number one reason um, that experts who look at the beauty market and see trends and they're seeing the trend each year for k-beauty becoming more and more popular the no-brainer is just because the products are so good and they make your skin look so good and people actually see a difference in their skin so therefore that's why it is becoming more and more popular each year um as for the beauty industry as a whole, skincare is one of the biggest at the moment. About mm, 10 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, skincare in, skincare in the West, I would say, skincare in most of the world outside of uh, East Asia was more popular. You know, if you look at the early years of YouTube and all the, you know, YouTube be beauty bloggers, the focus was on makeup, makeup and makeup brands and really focus on the new makeup launches. But it has shifted now and now there's more focus on skin, which is why we see so many brands bringing out their own skincare. We have 
Kylie Skin, we have uh, Jeffree Star bringing out his own skincare brand. All of the brands that we're doing only makeup, have, most of them have shifted to skin and we've seen so many celebrity skincare lines too. So it's because skincare is one at the moment, it is a multi-billion dollar industry and K-beauty on top of that is also a multi-billion dollar industry and it's showing no signs of slowing down. Three years ago experts were looking at K-beauty and they were estimating how much you know it's going to like generate in the future how much revenue and they said yeah in the next three years it's going to be worth this crazy amount like billions in revenue and it has reached that and each year it's just becoming more and more popular so um what are my personal reasons of why uh korean beauty but let's focus mostly on skincare because that's the one that's the most popular and when i think of k-beauty the first thing that pops up in my head is skincare first so why is korean skincare so popular. I'm glad you asked. Let me answer you. Um, so the first reason I think is, like I just said, it actually works. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a notion. Skincare actually working. So when I first started using uh, Korean products, I could actually see a visible difference in my skin within two weeks. Within two weeks of starting to use um, Korean toners, essences, and moisturizers, I could actually see a difference in my skin. My skin looked better. And the reason for this is because, oh, hold on. Apologies, my darlings. Uh, someone wanted to go out and I was like, no, I have a podcast to to record like everybody nowadays I have a podcast too <laughs> hopping on the trend of just like yes let's just start a podcast because that's what everyone does probably in 10 years time every occupation will just be taken over by robots and everybody will just be doing podcasts and that's going to be the <laughs> the income for everyone just the basic income yes like podcasting and so I completely forgot where I was. I was talking about, it's so good and I see a difference. Ah, the reason why Korean skincare is so good is a couple of reasons. Um, so Korean people really, really care about their skin. The reason for this is because there's a very high societal pressure, uh, unfortunately, um, about looking good and looking your best. So, <clears throat> Koreans are serious, serious people. So serious about their skin routine. And like, mm, it's like there's no playing around with the, skin, with the skin routine. So therefore, because many Koreans uh, start a skincare routine from a young age, they are a more informed, uh, they're more informed about skincare and about the correct products and they care a lot about the ingredients that go on their skin. So it's more difficult for uh, Korean skincare brands to pull the wool over their buyers eyes and kind of just like <laughs> them about what's in their products and things like that. Like people know when they're buying it, okay this ingredient's good, this ingredient is bad overall much more than the western audience you could say the western uh buyers what's that word it's not buyer it's that fancy word that people use um consumer yes that's it um so the consumers are much more aware mixed with the skincare market is absolutely crazy crazy in the sense of it's so competitive it is like it's a cat fight so in uh, Korea in general there's so many skincare shops 
so many like you walk down the street it's just like skincare shop skincare 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 shop so many they're all competing against each other there's so many brands uh so many like just ugh, numerous brands and each year more and more brands coming out launching so if you're going to compete against all those brands you have to be the best you have to have the best ingredients to stand out in this market so because of these reasons this is why korean skincare focuses on ingredients knows what it's talking about because its consumers know what they're talking about and their consumers have a much higher demand for higher quality better effects compared to western consumers definitely western consumers in the past these days western consumers are becoming much more aware of ingredients and much more you could say demanding but um i think koreans are, are still going to care more about what's in their skincare and know more compared to like a western audience because of uh because of just starting skincare so much younger and just because there's because uh, most people are interested in looking good so they share information on what products are the best and they you know they educate themselves a little bit better about skincare and stuff like that um which leads me on to another point uh not related to the popularity of skincare not not based on why i personally think skincare is so popular i have three other reasons why i think uh, korean skincare k-beauty has just exploded in popularity but as a result of the popularity of k-beauty we've seen a lot of copycat western brands you could say uh so for example 10 years ago uh there was this craze of bb creams in korea so people stopped wearing foundation every day and they were bb cream bb cream was a mixture between a moisturizer and a foundation and sometimes maybe an spf like sun cream and it was a more natural approach to like making your skin look more even and like you were wearing foundation but just quite much more natural and much more toned down so it's just trending in korea everyone bb creams bb creams bb creams are everywhere and then way like three or four years later bb creams became really popular in the west and you saw western brands uh, like like you know like l'oreal maybelline um essence maybe mac and stuff like that they all brought out bb creams and then in the west there was a bb cream craze now everyone in the west probably thought like oh yeah this cool new craze having no idea that the trend of bb creams came originated from south korea and originated like four or five years ago and there has always been that thing between uh you could say like asia in general well more like mm, east asia you know people say asia the same way they go like africa the same way they go the west to europe and they put it into a blanket but it is easier to put it into a blanket and sometimes there is just a generaliza generalization of east asia anyway so you know it but it is true there is like many skincare products or uh, fashion trends that start in East Asia and then four or five years later then they become popular in the West. Many people say you look to countries like Japan, South Korea, a bit of China, you see what's trending now and then like five years later it's going to be trending in the West and it's going to trickle down to their catwalks and their beauty. So you see a lot of uh western brands even now copying korean products and acting as if it was their own idea and people who have no idea thinking it's an original idea so right now there's uh, sheet masks are now like mainstream uh so many west like vaseline yeah vaseline do sheet masks l'oreal nivea 
uh, like loads of Western brands do sheet masks now. Like it's not like, it's not like a Korean thing anymore, exotic. But the thing is, they only started doing sheet masks in the last five years, and they started doing sheet masks because they got their inspiration from Korean skincare brands, and then they said, okay, we're gonna do sheet masks, and. But sheet masks have been a thing in Korean beauty since, oh, since when? Like 2005, 2006? Like, have they been around for like, has it been popular in Korean skincare for like 20 years? Definitely, oh, definitely could be. Let's be safe and say, oh, maybe from like 2000, 2007, they've been a thing. Um, so actually you will see a lot of Western brands will send representatives to South Korea because South Korea is famous for skincare and is definitely, you could say, you could say it's the leading country for skincare or one of the leading countries for skincare. France also comes in too. Um, so they'll send representatives to South Korea to see what's trending and just like do the same with a western brand and kind of pretend that it's their own idea or you know that mm, they they invented it when they didn't and actually another thing is you're starting to see a lot of western brands that are manufacturing their products in south korea so many times if uh, i've looked at uh sheet masks from different western brands and i've turned around and it says made in south korea so very well it could be the exact same factory as like a korean brand you know and it will just be maybe the exact same sheet mask but just different packaging one is like this is a korean skincare brand okay this packaging this one is for i don't know like l'oreal or uh solista or some other like western brand that's doing that that does sheet masks now and they just put the different packaging on it and then export it abroad so that now is very popular and I just find that very very interesting because that shows you how popular K-beauty is that western brands are looking to Korea for inspiration and that they are like copying off South Korean ideas because I mean the the best form of flattery is when someone copies you. Many people might disagree with that. They might be the people who are at school who are like, oh, she's copying me, I hate it. But you know, if you were one of those people at school where someone would copy you and you'd be like, oh, okay, well, that's flattery. Someone's copying me because they like what I'm doing. That's how it is. If these Western skincare brands are looking and like clinging on to every k-beauty word and trying to just recreate it themselves that shows you who the boss is who the main is and it's k-beauty so my second reason why i think k-beauty is so popular is linked to the first reason of it being so good i mentioned that there are so so an abundance of uh Korean skincare brands. It's just so many, so many, so many, so many brands. And every year there's like a new brand launch and stuff. So how do you think, put on your marketing cap here, put on your economics wig. How do you think a brand is going to succeed in such a competitive market in order to succeed they need to drive their price down. And so, Korean skincare beauty is so affordable. Holy, oh, holy Christ. I, this was one of the things that just impressed me the most when I first discovered Korean skincare was I couldn't believe how cheap it is, how amazing it is. My favorite, I'll show you now. My favorite moisturizer, is this it's by the sem and it's the baobab collagen cream the care plus baobab collagen cream this is only 5001 which is roughly five euro or five dollars and 
uh, when I start using it, my, my skin starts to look amazing. The ingredients in it are brilliant and lots of people comment like, oh wow, your skin looks really good. It's, if I wanted, let's say, to buy a moisturizer that had similar ingredients to this moisturizer and was as good as this moisturizer in the West from a Western non-Korean brand, it would, I'd probably be buying a luxury brand moisturizer that's, I don't know, maybe 40 euro, 40 dollars, 40 pounds, I don't know, whatever your currency is, Australian dollars, I don't know what they use in South Africa, yeah, like, you'd be spending that much because cheap products most of the time in the West, it's hard to find something life-changing if it's quite affordable. There's some brands that are very affordable and are really good and stuff, but with Korean skincare, because they're all trying to compete against each other, because there's so much skincare in the market and because so many people buy uh, skincare here in South Korea, the price is way lower. The more popular product is, uh, most of the time, this isn't always true, but the more popular product is, that kind of like puts the price down. I think, uh, if you study business or economics, let me know if that's true or not. Explain it better, please. But that is the reason of why Korean skincare products are uh, so cheap, because there's just so many of them. So, hey, that speaks for itself. So that's going to be a huge reason why uh, K-beauty is so popular because it's so affordable. I mean, you're going... If, <laughs> it works amazing and it's so affordable. If you want to get a product from a Western brand, a non-Korean uh, brand, let's say, that does the same as a Korean brand, you probably have to pay three or four times the amount that you'd be paying to get the same effect. Um, now, when you buy uh, Korean skincare outside of Korea, like you buy it on the internet uh, from one of those websites, the price is marked up because they need to make a profit and then you're also paying for shipping and stuff like that and taxes. But it's still affordable. Like, you, it's still, in my opinion, you can find great products quite affordably, um, which is great also for people who, you know, aren't were like teenagers who aren't working uh, full time or it's it's more accessible to everyone so third reason why I believe that Korean skincare is so popular is uh, because of the packaging the marketing the cuteness the girliness of K-beauty okay so there is a lack in Western uh, brands of keeping the packaging cute, you know, keeping it girly, keeping it pretty. Most people might think, okay, the packaging of a product doesn't matter. It's about the ingredients and it's about how good a product is. And that is true. However, if I present you with, let's say, um, do I have any cute packaging here? Anything? Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, if I present you with um, a moisturizer that's really good and it's just ugly packaging or not special, and then I present you with a similar moisturizer that's just as good, uh, maybe similar price or cheaper, but it's cute. It's like pink and cute and I'm girly. What are you going to pick? I'm going to pick the one that's cuter. And one of the things I love about going into a, a, a Korean uh, beauty brand shop is I just love all the cute details, creative packaging because they understand it's not just 
the products, plonk it in anything, there you go, that's it. That it's the overall packaging and details that make a difference. And at the end of the day, we surround ourselves with cute, well not cute things, but human beings like to be surrounded by things that are beautiful. That's why we do our homes up. That's why we, you know, if you put cute stickers on your bike, if you uh, decorate your your locker at school, if you, uh, you know, doodle on your notebook and make it look more cute, it makes you a little bit happier. It makes you like a little bit mm, perkier. And so when it comes to Korean skincare, seeing products that are really affordable, work amazingly, and also are on your shelf and look like the packaging is so beautiful or so cute or so girly. It makes me, at least, um, it's fun, it's cute to look at, it's, it makes me feel like a little bit happier and a little bit more like, oh, like more, I mean, you're more willing to buy something that looks better. And I think at the end of the day, human beings and magpies, I don't think we're that different. I think you shine something <laughs> glittery, holographic in front of us and we're kind of just like, ooh, like, ah, so beautiful. So although it might seem like a mundane, a mu mundane and like a stupid reason to put into why Korean beauty is so popular. It's because, oh, because the packaging is cute. People might be rolling their eyes being like, that is just so stupid. How is that a reason for like K-beauty being a multi-billion dollar industry? Watch reactions of people who have never used K-beauty in their life when they first see the products and they do mention a lot of the time just how cute it is and how lovely and ooh and they seem so excited and so happy about oh look at these sheep masks look how cute they are and oh my god it's a little panda ah. there is that emphasis too and I think it is something that we're lacking a little bit in western products these days I think a lot of western brands think that people don't care about how a product looks, that people aren't that shallow anymore and that people care more about the integrity of a product and how like, oh, what will this product do for me? But I've seen uh, people online kind of quite disappointed. They're showing like packaging of products before and new packaging like Doritos has changed its, pa its packaging and other brands have changed their packaging and they've made their packaging much more simple, much more flat, way less creative, just much more like bleh and bleh, no effort. And people are saying, why? Why are you doing this? Like, we don't want this. We don't want this. We want to look at something artistic and beautiful. So that's one of my theories. Conspiracy theory, if you will. Little uh, theory of why I think K-beauty. Uh, my third reason why I think K-beauty is so popular worldwide and then my fourth reason is it's <laughs> it's deeper than um <laughs> cute packaging and my fourth reason uh, why I think Korean beauty is uh, so popular and then I'll go on to explain how you the Korean wave and how it's all linked to this is the exoticness of K-beauty We are always intrigued by something that is foreign and exotic. There's some clip out there. I don't know if it was a behind the scenes of 21, the Korean girl group when they had their own show, when they're interviewing Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, or if it was just a separate interview. So there was a time around like 2010, 2012 maybe, where Will I Am was just obsessed with South Korea and obsessed with 21. Definitely 10 years too, er too early, unfortunately. Um, they were way ahead of their time. 
uh, it's, a, it's a shame really, but he said this line and I thought it was so funny, uh, but at the same time very true. He was like, when you look at it, and it was just like Korean lettering, Korean hangul, the alphabet of Korean. He's like, can you read that? Nope. Foreign. He's like, yeah, foreign. And he's just talking about how it's so cool because you can't read it. So it's so foreign. <laughs> and I, there, I, I think what he means by this is there's just this thing that there's always a trending country that the West will latch onto and anything they do and any product that comes from there it's I think but I think it's also heavily linked to marketing as well it's just so cool and so exotic and it's kind of the the grass is always greener on the other side kind of stereotype so when someone sees a product is from South Korea there's this moment of ooh oh that's a country that's very far away our stereotype is that for let's say west like um non Koreans who know nothing about uh Korea at all um the image that comes to mind is just that oh Asians have good skin um which I mean when it comes to South Koreans yeah damn a lot of South, a lot of South Koreans have really good skin uh because they look after their skin very well uh because of Korean skincare right and also you know just going and getting like skin treatments and stuff like that so in general yeah I do agree I think South Koreans a lot of South Koreans not all a lot of South Koreans have quite good skin so there's this image in their head of like ooh, if I use the same products as the people in this country then I'm gonna be similar but it's mostly this obsession this kind of like ooh, something that's exotic something that's different something that's from somewhere far away becomes cool to us so people will watch like a film that's in a foreign language with subtitles and it's this feeling of like I'm so cool because I'm watching a movie in a foreign language it's so cool when we meet people who speak multiple languages we have this idea in our head that whoa they're so cool because they can speak loads of languages it's really cool and particularly it's always been looked at that countries such as Japan, South Korea, uh, China a little bit too, that they're kind of like living in the future and they're so ad more advanced than Europe and America. And when it comes to like uh, technology, you know, like like Samsung and um, like internet speed too because the internet is the fastest in South Korea in the whole world yeah you can definitely say they are ahead of us uh, with like technology and stuff like that but when they are marketing these products abroad there is this heightened like focus almost like exaggeration of how exotic and cool and foreign this brand is and I'm having a really hard time explaining this but I'm hoping you kind of understand what I mean by this it's something I've noticed for a long time in films and media and stuff that there's this just hyper <laughs> I have to stop saying the word hyper I say the word hyper as if I'm gonna say something profound and, and amazing after it but now I have nothing really amazing to say. There just is this um, trend that when things are exotic, when things are unknown to us that they're cool, I think the less you know about something uh, at the start the more mysterious it is, the more cool it is and there's a stereotype in the West that you know that 
uh, Asia is more advanced than us and that you know they many Asians live longer and have better skin so if we use the same products as them that it'll be similar for us and it's not a stereotype that's completely based like that came out of nowhere because I mean statistically uh, many East yeah East Asian countries do live longer have huge life like much higher life expectancy than uh, um, America or many countries in Europe let's say um, technologically advanced yeah sure is the skincare and ingredients products better with Korean skincare definitely um, but it is just this sparkly sparkly of thing of oh I'm not interested in that product oh did I mention it's from a far away exotic country Ooh, tell me more it's so unknown, it's so, ooh, it's just like, it's just an added layer to something that makes it cool. So that would be my fourth reason of added of why I think K-Beauty is so popular and keeps getting more and more popular each year. But I don't know what you think. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's also true? Related to that, the exoticness of Korean skincare for people who uh, have never, you know, been to Korea and they just see um, Korean products in their local supermarket or they want to buy it online and they get interested into in in in, 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 in ooh, stuttering so much, they get interested in it. K Beauty uh, would be a, a huge, huge, huge part of. Uh, the popularity of K-Beauty, which I didn't even touch on, how silly of me, is how you, which uh, means the Korean wave. So the Korean wave uh, is the popularization of Korean soft power culture. So soft power would be Korean music, so K-pop, uh, Korean dramas, films, uh, skincare, makeup is included in that, Korean food, basically Korean culture and kind of exportable, exportable, is that a word? Yeah, it is. Exportable products and the popularity of Korea as a whole. So since the 90s, or oh, has it been earlier than that? Hmm, well, for at least 20, 30 years now, we've seen more of an increase in, definitely an increase in K-pop. A uh, huge increase in K dramas, obviously. Films too. We've seen Korean films be nominated. Well, well, Parasite won an Oscar, and people now are actually aware of South Korea because of this Korean wave. People who have no interest in South Korea, they've heard of BTS. They've probably seen Parasite or know it won the Oscar. They watch Squid Game, even if, you know, they don't care about South Korea. They've heard of it, they've seen it, and now they're aware, like, South Korea is in the zeitgeist. Korean food is becoming way more popular abroad, like, much more popular abroad. Um, so linked to that is Korean beauty. So actually, this will be my fifth, this is my fifth reason, actually. How stupid of me to not realize this is a fifth reason. <laughs> It's late. Um, so when you watch, uh, let's say, Korean dramas, you see how beautiful the actresses are. So therefore, a lot of people then get interested in the beauty products that these actresses use and then become in get interested in K-beauty. Um, or these actresses will promote K-beauty brands and be the spokesperson of um, skincare brands or makeup or, you know, different things like that. Um, so therefore, because of the Korean wave, the how are you, it will, on the back of it, make K-beauty more popular. K-beauty is part of the Korean wave. Anything that is Korean, it's called soft power, which is something that's Soft power is described as like encouraging you to like a country, kind of through 
things such as um, like music, dramas, films, food, things like that. Um, but the very interesting thing about the Korean wave and Haryu is actually it's intentional. Ooh, this is really interesting. So it was the South Korean government, South Korean government's intention for all these years to increase the popularity of um, South Korea through music, through films, through K-beauty. It is completely the South Korean government's intention for K-pop to have an international audience and to be have a global interest and I guess you could definitely say they've achieved it they've achieved already no or are we just on the brink of achieving it can we say now that K-pop is mainstream or are we just at the beginning of mainstream it's hard to tell and we won't really be able to tell until like a few more years same with K-beauty it's Korea's intention overall the government's intention that K-beauty leads in the world for skincare and I would definitely say it is leading especially based on how all these non-Korean brands are just copying K-beauty right um but it's their intention that it becomes globalized and popular outside so all of their intentions of how you Korean wave uh, essentially it's safe to say are coming true or have come true so this Korean wave is a huge huge part of why K-beauty is so popular worldwide but I guess you could look at the Korean wave and you could say it's all four of the previous reasons combined you could say you know the ingredients being good the affordability the cuteness the exoticness of it being Korean, uh, all those together are kind of like the government's intention in order to make it popular. Like, is this just what Korean skincare is and because it's cute, affordable, good quality and exotic is it became popular? Or did the government kind of sit down and say, okay, how do we make it popular? Okay, we need our ingredients to be better. We need it to be more affordable. We need to be cuter. We need to really drive home. Oh, this is Korean. This is exotic to sell it to an international audience. I don't know. What came first, the chicken or the egg? So they were uh, my personal theories of why K-beauty is so popular worldwide. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. This was the K-beauty crew podcast if you are interested in uh, being considered as a guest on the podcast you do not need to be a beauty expert at all I am not a beauty expert I am just someone who really loves k-beauty um, you can email us at kbeautycrew crew with a k at gmail.com and I will see you next time